Hi, my name is Elizabeth Clark. I'm a postdoc uh, in Rodrigo Almeida's lab at UC Berkeley. And today I'm going to be talking about our work on the biomechanics of feeding in xylem sap feeding insects, which is a fascinating insect group from a biological perspective because they're extreme feeders. They consume xylem sap, which is very dilute, and they've actually been estimated to ingest up to a thousand times their body mass every day. And it's really critical for us to understand how they feed because they're vectors of lethal bacterial pathogens like Xylella fastidiosa that causes Pierce's disease, which has a big impact on the grapevine industry. There's a lot of things about the physics of feeding and as a result, transmission of Xylella that we don't really understand. And this is because feeding and pathogen transmission happen internally. These insects need um, have a needle-like mouth parts that they insert into the plant's vascular tissue to extract xylem sap. So we can't really directly observe what's going on inside during feeding. So how do we virtually look inside our plant and insects to see what's going on during xylem sap feeding? We're using 3D imaging. A CT scanner captures 360 degrees of X-ray projections to create a non-invasive 3D image of an object. You might be most familiar with this technique if you've needed a CT scan, if you've had a head injury or participated in a medical study. In order to study insects in 3D, we really need a concentrated stream of X-ray particles because we need to resolve the details of their tiny parts. And to do that, we actually need a particle accelerator. We're lucky enough to have one that we can use for 3D imaging right here in Berkeley, the synchrotron at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. Using 3D imaging, we're able to get a really nice high resolution image of our sharpshooters. We can see the anatomy of the different parts inside of the insects that are important for feeding, like the feeding complex, um, the cybarium, the pump that opens and closes to create suction for ingestion, and the muscles that power the pump as well. We can also see the space inside the insect where fluid flows through the food canal, which is highlighted here in blue. So, we integrated parameters from our 3D imaging to generate computational fluid dynamic simulations of the interface between the xylem vessel and the insect food canal to answer some questions about the fundamentals of feeding, like how much pressure insects need to apply to extract sap. But we want to build models that look at fluid flow over time. But in order to do that, we need to get parameters regarding how much and the rate of fluid flow through the food canal. And in order to do that, we actually had to create a new tool at the synchrotron called the cryojet that sprays liquid nitrogen vapor over the specimen so we can image them while they're frozen. So because we're interested in how the machinery inside the insect head works, we flash froze insects during different stages of xylem sap feeding, and we use this new tool to keep them frozen during the scan. Using this new imaging technique, we aim to measure the volume of the inflated cybarium, the rate of cyberial pumping, and observe the range of variation in fluid flow. We will then integrate these new parameters into our computational fluid dynamics modeling to identify circumstances that would promote bacterial transmission. And we were able to capture the structure of the food canal in different stages of feeding using this technique. In the first row, you can see the cybarium is empty. In the middle, it's full. And at the bottom, it's relaxing, pushing fluid through the esophagus and into the rest of the digestive tract. This new type of imaging data is giving us insights into the volume of the cybarium. And using the flash frozen insects, we found that we can estimate the 3D volume of the cybarium just from measuring the height of the cybarium from a lateral 2D projection. So we're pairing that with a different synchrotron-based imaging te technique where we look at high-resolution 2D x-ray videos of the inside of the head of these bugs while they're feeding. So I'm showing here a live x-ray video of a sharpshooter feeding on a basal stem that we took at our Argonne National Labs in Chicago. Let's try and play that again. So we can see the Cybarium moving up and down live and then we can measure um, the 2D height of the Cybarium to calculate the volume. So we've observed over 400 pumping events so far with the average being about half a second. 
And because there's, as I mentioned, this relationship between Siberial height and the 2D image and the 3D volume, we're estimating the volume of the Siberium during each of these pumping events, giving us the rate of flow. So far, we've estimated Siberial volume from 150 of these events with hundreds more to come. We can put all of this data together to build a time-dependent model to simulate how fluid is flowing inside the feeding complex as ingestion is happening and identify circumstances that would create opportunities for bacterial transmission.